Welcome, friends. This is uh, Dr. Jaitley, your cardiologist on your favorite uh, video channel, Muni Meter Health, which is dedicated to serve you by providing uh, medical education and patient education. And uh, this is primarily to improve the clinical outcomes, as we always say that uh, uh, the patients are well educated about the health and illnesses. The chances are they'll be more compliant. There'll be more uh, um, the fruitful discussion out of their uh, diagnostic visits and therapeutic visits, etc., etc. So, uh, Muni Meter Health is. Uh, my global initiative, as a matter of fact, where I deeply believe that medical education and patient education, they both need to be addressed in order to improve the clinical outcomes. Without any further ado, like in every single short video, we like to present you some uh, interesting subjects and go over a few things, both for medical fraternity as well as for patients uh, at large. So today we're going to talk about what is silent ischemia. Now, this has been around for a while, we know, and it has been very controversial right in the beginning, I'd like to say. It is very, very controversial still what to do with it. Uh, should it be recognized at all? Should should you have to go for any testing? Should you go for any advanced testing, imaging, etc.? And sh uh, should you actually treat it? And or um, and the question, of course, arises whether whether or not you should really even do anything about it. So so the whole idea is wanting to see that, uh, say, a, say a normal individual, forty five year old male, is going for a regular, say, um, a, a pre employment physical, and he undergoes a blood test, he undergoes a chest X ray, and um, and the doctor also decides to do a stress test and said, all right, let's do a stress test. And a stress test turns out to be positive. Now that's called silent ischemia, even though. Patient, the person was totally fine. He's going only for pre-employment physical, and that silent ischemia is because the stress test is positive. Now, here's a person who's walking on a treadmill. This is uh, this is regular Joe. He's walking on the treadmill. Uh, treadmill, basically, you know, you're attached to EKGs, like a 12 lead EKG here. This is the computer. The doctor stands right here, and of course, the heart rate, the blood pressure monitoring, and of course, your ECG monitoring is being continuously done. Okay, so you have a continuous monitoring of heart rate, uh, BP, and ECG. Um, and at the end of the test, after, after and, 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 and uh, you know, at the end of the test, which, which is every three minutes, the treadmill uh, goes a little faster, a little higher up on incline, and that's a set protocol. And uh, once the test is completed, um, there is some changes. Now, this is a normal looking complex. I've shown you, and so the person had a normal ECG, as you as you see, and then subsequently patients started to have an ST depression, which is called the ST segment is right here. So remember the P, the QRS, and the ST segment depression that occurs here, and this is your T wave. So what happens is this, this is for the sake of the students, so just to let you know. Again, ST depression is like almost like um, you could fill up some water in this cup here. So I always say that it's ST depression, that's depression. Whereas the opposite, the opposite concave, uh, convexity here where you have a hill almost like an anthill here a small hill that is an ST elevation that is an infarct so this is an infarct and could be silent and this is an ischemia which is which is what we are talking about essentially silent ischemia so silent ischemia where the ST depression occurs if this if this occurred during the walk uh, Joe was doing and again he's totally asymptomatic there are no symptoms but a test test is positive so what do you do so the questions obviously are number one: um, Could this could this test be um, false? Could the test be false? Right? That could be a possibility. The second question that somebody wants to know is: uh, uh, Could uh, um, could there be disease? Is there a disease present? In other words, does does the does Joe has uh, coronary artery disease? Is that present? Three. Um, should uh, should 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 the person go for any further testing? So further testings uh, could be a question here, obviously. And then the fourth question, obviously, is should there be any treatment? Did you want to, you know, uh, offer any medications? Are there any procedures you want to do, etc.? Even though that even though we had no symptoms, but the test is positive right here for ischemia. And fifthly. Um, you know the the major overriding question is obvious: Should this patient have this? Should this person should have had this treadmill test? Was there a treadmill test necessary? Because that's the biggest question right now. And even today in 2017, I'll say that the silent ischemia is a 
is a very controversial, it's a very interesting aspect we see. Basically, it implies that there is coronary artery disease that we know, there is some coronary obstruction that the, that the person has, except that patient did not have any symptoms. So symptoms were not present. So it's no symptoms were present. And because no symptoms were present in this individual, it's called silent ischemia. Now we know about uh, almost 35% of the women and 25% of the men folks, okay, 25% of the men folks, they have silent MIs or silent heart attacks. Uh, now that's very, very significant. So they may have either atypical manifestations where it's totally misleading, like uh, they could have muscular aches or they could have something which could be mistaken like a GI upset, a gastrointestinal upset, but silent but there's a sufficient amount, almost half of these women, 35% will have a silent uh, 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 heart attack and uh, almost equally half, half of these 25% uh, of these uh, men would also have a silent heart attack. So in other words, you do have a sufficient group and the other half will have a, uh, atypical manifestations, obviously. Okay. So the other half will have an atypical manifestation. So we are looking at uh, quite a quite a quite a quite a burden in the society where silent ischemia has not been addressed, uh, and that's why I just bring it. Uh, you know, I wanted to bring it to your attention, both to the patient and to the doctor community, that silent ischemia does exist. Sometimes it could be just picked up on a not on a treadmill, but on prolonged EKG monitoring, and that's called Holter. You could do Holters, like 24-hour Holter. I'm sure your doctor may have ordered it, or you may have heard of it. So the Holters, and they are basically EKG monitoring where about three leads or you know four leads are attached to you and you return the console the next day I've done a, I've done an, another video episode on that so you can you can uh, you can certainly avoid on that but the fact is that these holters can also detect the same ischemia and sometimes even in infarct or ST elevation etc so ST depressions are well defined in ischemic patients uh, and they are silent at times where there are no symptoms again the pain perception or the typical presentation of silent uh, ischemia which is in general like a crushing or a tightness that's that a person feels mostly on exertion and accompanied sometimes by nausea and a little bit of sweating and maybe a shortness of breath or palpitations or dizziness all of these symptoms which which stop as soon as the patient stops his or her exertion and 15 minutes later the pain resolves and sometimes it does not resolve requires a nitroglycerin to treat so that is a typical manifestation of angina now all of those symptoms if they're not present it's called silent ischemia so uh, i quit I uh, quickly wanted to, uh, you know, uh, deal with silent ischemia here in this video episode just for your own education. Remember, this is an educational channel, primarily only providing you more information and knowledge about your human heart and uh, its illnesses and how to keep healthy and of course wanting to see how best you can go out and discuss with your doctors and to understand your testings better understand the needs for the testings better the therap the therapeutic approaches that the cardiologist or the internist wants to give you so once again i thank you for your attention stay well and stay on money meter health always thank you and looking forward to seeing you in my